All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Reincarnation Coliseum update. You know, we got chapter 79 to go over. This was very entertaining for me to read on. Let me tell you, I've been talking about it on Twitter. And of course, you know, I had to come up and make this video. This is going to involve Alice Cotton. Alice Cotton is the next of the Heavenly Kings to fight Mikigami. But little, little backstory on Alice Cotton. Not too much, but a little bit about her. She is a lolly. I do believe she is 19 years old. But in any case, she is a lolly. Some people may have a problem with that even if it's fiction so before you get into this just know there is lollies in this and it is what it is now moving forward she um zay questions alice if she can beat mikigami and of course alice is like who do you think you're talking to and like this energy around her just this aura that she has starts like messing up the castle like making things shake and everything everybody's like panicking but of course in the long run zay is just like of course you'll win what am i saying like, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't, like, doubt you and whatnot. Knowing that, going forward, what does Zay do? Zay pays off mostly everybody in the kingdom to be on her side that knows Spatial Exchange. Spatial Exchange is this unique ability that is very hard to use in combat, but Alice is so proficient at it that that's, she ends fights in, like, 0 0.5 seconds or something like that. That's pretty much what it is. I mean, she's that deadly with it. And so, knowing that she paid off everybody, Mikigami can't experiment with it, but... Little does she know, Mikigami and Zulu paid off one person to leave the country. And this individual name is Tia Clover. She is located in the eastern slum areas of the Fortress City Dango. And she, like, she's proficient in spatial exchange. She tells, you know, Mikigami about it. And, you know, like, hey, you paid me, so I'm going to teach you what I know. So knowing that... He, she wants him to use spatial exchange on her, though it's known to kill people if you can use it effectively. And he tries it out on her. Of course, it fails because he's copy -coon. copy -coon uses only 50% of the power, and it's not going to do what Alice Cotton can do with it. And so they're like panicking, like, I he may not win this. But that's only because it's in combat, and that's why Alice is so good at it, because she doesn't really fight, like, bare knuckles. She just... Her ability goes in use, and that's it. It's different from Mary and Marl, how they fight. So he's thinking of ways of dealing with the situation, and then it just, like, slides over to Mary, and she's talking about his, you know, next opponent is Alice. What's, what's like, what's going to happen? Because Alice is going to kill him. But she's acting more like a, like a married, like a wife. She's acting like a wife. She's, like, cleaning up the room and all that stuff, and she doesn't know what to think. She doesn't know her, she don't know what her feelings are. So it goes over to the Coliseum for that matter. It goes into the Coliseum. The announcer is announcing that it's Mikigami versus Alice. And they're like, okay, Mikigami's been lucky so far, but will his luck run out? We don't know, but, you know, we getting that feeling that Mikigami, we going we gonna to pull this off. So knowing that, Zayd, Zayd, of course, is watching. A gentleman by the name of, I say Gessley, dude got like a wig on. He looks goofy. He looks like Humpty Dumpty or something like that. It's, it's hilarious. And, of course, you know, there's been talks of Mikigami being, like, a heavenly king of sorts. Now, I, uh, I don't know if that was the exact translation that I got when I was reading. But it was like they were assuming that these matches are getting fixed somehow. But, you know, Zay is like, no way. And this is the day he, Mikigami dies. So, going forward, she can't wait to see how this plays out. This is more on Alice's story. Alice hates men. She hates men. And people want Mikigami to win so bad. And... She, you know, Alice is just having such a disgust on her face that she's like talking about how they're filthy, inferior species, and just low on intelligence. So she states to Mikigami that she's gonna properly turn him into a girl and get doted on all day. She loves like to turn people into like lollies, pretty much. She has like a whole gr group of lollies with her normally, but when she fights, she's by herself. And so people in the audience are like this brat's cocky. Mikigami, kill her, do this and that. And in a split second before the match, is, match even starts, she, like, destroys the this dude in the audience's legs or something. Like, his whole feet's, like, gone because she's a spatial exchange. Like I told you, she's deadly with spatial exchange. And then, like, she gets this scary look on her. It's like, what did you just say to me? Like, you filthy man. And everybody's like, oh, my God, we're, we're definitely not going to say anything because something's about to happen. But Zulu and Tia are going over, are going over like this of Mikigami's chances. Now that he's been properly trained, 
by her, his chances are 50-50 now instead of zero, which they were before when it first started. Now that we got everything out of the way, we go into the fight. The fight starts, the gong is, you know, the gong is wrong, and the first thing that happens is Alice uses spatial exchange. Alice uses spatial exchange right from the get-go, and of course, Mikugami also uses spatial exchange, and of course, Dil Alice is like, what just happened? She doesn't understand because he should have been split in two, but he's not. And something goes, some type of scent goes by her nose and it like, it like weakens her. It weakens her so much that she falls to the ground. So she falls to the ground and Mikuyami's like, thank God you fell for that trap because now I can do what I want. And of course, that's at the cost of Mikuyami's left hand and right foot. His general direction with spatial chains got better as he was using it throughout like the, his experiment. So it turned out great for him. And that's why he got the win that he got the win. Now I'll say this, him getting the win because that's literally what happens. Once he pretty much incapacitates her, he like walks over to her. This dude looks like a damn devil. He looks like a damn devil. She called, Alice calls him a freak. And it's just like, holy hell, I'm, he's about to pass out because he's losing so much blood. So he's like, I'm about to pass out. So I should end this quick. So what he does, he pulls his knife out. She's like scared to death. Don't come at me, this, this, and this. And he stabs the ground next to her and Alice passes out after pissing herself. So she pisses herself, passes out. Mikugami gives a thumbs up. He did it. And he claims another girl. It's done. <laughs> Zade is like pissed. She like goes, like she just loses her cap and she's just like pissed about everything. And then we go on to the final chapter of him getting her as his new slave. Now she's already bitching and moaning. I say this because Alice was bitching and moaning the entire time. Alice is bitching and moaning about everything. She's like, why did I lose this filthy man, this and that? You know, why are you dragging me and everything? Like she was bitching from the moment they went to the desk because you know they gotta get the aphrodisiac and do the deed. So they've been bitching, so she's been bitching the entire time at the desk. And now it's come to a point where she's a new slave and she has to do what she got to do. Fulfill your obligations, as Mary and Marl have said before. Once you lose, you just fulfill your obligation. And she still hates men. Like, she has no viewpoint. She didn't fall or succumb to Mikigami like Marl and Mary did from, like, just the get-go. So she's, like, talking her shit. She's talking her shit about Mikigami, telling me he's an eyesore, this and that. And, you know, Mikigami comes back with, well, at least, you know, you pissed yourself. So it is what it is. She's just like, shut up. Da, 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 da. And she's trying to figure out, like, how to get out of the situation. So she's thinking of a plan to gain Marl and Mary's trust to overpower Mikigami. As you all know, with the, when the aphrodisiac takes place, it weakens the women in the series. But she hasn't taken it yet. So she's thinking that teaming up with Marl and Mary is going to be the best option for all of them to get out of there. And Zay can protect them to flee the country. But little does she know, the moment they walk into the new upgraded room, Mary and uh, Marl are already like obedient. Aprons, being nude and stuff. And I'm like, and Mickey Gummy's like, I thought you, what the hell's going on here? And Marl comes over with, I thought you might like this. Again, they're slaves, so they're gonna, they're fulfilling their obligation because they know what's going to happen. They have to be in there for like the next three or four days or something like that. You know how this shit goes down. And Mary appears behind uh, Alice, like, you're going to take this. You're going to do this. You're going to fulfill your obligation just like we had to do to do ours. So she forces the aphrodisiac down on Alice, and Alice gets thrown onto the bed next. You know, everyone's feeling, everyone's getting prepared for what's about to happen. And Marl's just like, you know, Alice is the one to go first since she's new to this. Alice liked Marl at some point when she was just, like, with him as the Heavenly King. So this is a great opportunity for them to all like get along. There's like a whole lesbian scene going on and Mary's like, it'll get better. Just, just relax. It's so damn good that Mikigami just gets this hard on from hell. The appetizer in the main course is right in one. You got the lolly, you got the brawler, and you got the sadist like all in one right then and there. And he just snaps and just gets his mother. He, I mean, he's punching cooch in there. Like I'm telling you, the man is punching cooch. It been in there. The aftermath is pretty damn good, but the man looks more exhausted because now he got three women and he just had a whole bang out section. Zulu comes in to tell him that, hey, your next opponent is going to be, you know, Fine, 
catastrophe who is the last of the heavenly kings and there's no information on this individual she's a mystery and we don't get much on catastrophe really we don't know what her abilities are we do get to see like within the chapter of her coming and going to like the store to t like to see some stuff and a guy in there is looking at the gear as well she calls him a monkey and so she was just like please don't do anything to him because not in the shop anyway she obliges and she leaves the guy follows Fine to an open area of sorts and says, you know, I don't like the way you disrespected me. So he combines Flame Ball and Thunder Ball. It goes at Fine. Fine pretty much just brushes it off. It looks like she absorbed it, maybe. It looks like she absorbed it, but maybe not. Or it was a reflection of sorts. The individuals that got hit by it are crispified. The two bodyguards that were with him. They got crispified. She's known for like 100. She has like 108 skills. She has 108 skills. Now, nah, that's a lot of fucking skills. Zulu comments that she only, that most people only have about five. I'm thinking this chick is like Mikugami in some way. Like, she knows something and she was sent to that world too. She could be a bigger threat than Zay. So it's like, what the fuck? But it ends with Mikugami just thinking things over. Like, I wonder how he's going to handle, like, wonder how I'm going to handle this. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was chapter 7, 8, 9. These are long-ass chapters. Uh, follow me on socials. And, of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. Holla at your boy.